Act two, scene one, the gates of quarantine. Joe sits at the desk, musing. A purple piece of paper falls out of the sky. Dionysus, that's strange. Dionysus sashays in, followed by Andy, Gabriel, and Raphael. Joseph, hello, how are you? I'm well, what's going on? Oh, uh, yes, I'm sponsoring these fools to quarantine or whatever. Being handsy. I, I presume you're looking for your friends, Angelica One and Angelica Dos, or should I say Linda and Carmen? Who? And who? Joe holds up two files. Your friends. Their Earth names are Linda and Carmen. The committee gave them clearance not too long ago after Hera showed up with them, uh, but they looked really familiar, especially Carmen. And then I remembered... You remembered our show. I remember your show plays in the background when I'm doing paperwork, Mr. Michaels. Uh. Joe turns to Raphael. Ah, Mr. Seraph, it's amazing how you stay on top of those million point scores. It, it's impressive. Thanks. And you, Andy, well, you're just all kinds of entertaining. Andy isn't sure if this is a compliment or not. You know, if I had your files, I could tell you your real names, but the files haven't shown up yet. No, it's it's okay. I, I like Andy. Andy is a really great name for you. And Can we please hurry this up? I have a party to plan. Joe takes a deep breath, like the breathing exercises. Welcome to quarantine. We accommodate every psychosocial need with evidence-based rehabilitation. Just give me the damn paper. Love is patient. Love is kind, Dionysus. Wrong religion. <laughs> Joe turns to Andy, Gabriel, and Raphael. At any rate, I got permission from the committee to take Linda and Carmen into quarantine, but not you all. But... Just one moment. Joe scribbles on a piece of scroll. Now, where are those winged envelopes? Joe searches for the envelopes. Look, I I'll take the request to the committee. It'll make it faster. Plus, they like me. Joe hands Dion the scroll. We most certainly appreciate that, Dionysus. Let's just get you checked out then. Joe pulls out a form and hands it to Dion. Dion signs it. All right, boys, have fun. Dion dashes off. Dion can be very strange. How long is this going to take? This might take a little while to hear back from the committee. In the meantime, paperwork. Joe pulls out his stack of paperwork and then looks at the boys. You may as well make yourselves comfortable. Andy, Gabriel, and Raphael look at one another, exasperated, lights fade. Sorry. Scene two, Ambrosia Cafe. Hera and Teresa sip wine together and chat. <laughs> That sounds absolutely delightful. You'll get a change of pace, and I really, really need you guys. Ah, well, I'm fully on board, and I'm sure Dion will get here. I'm not sure where he is. He hasn't sent me a communication or anything. I'm sure he'll be coming along soon. Yes. Would you like? some tea perhaps yes that would be great did you have someone here to make it oh i can make it myself i didn't mean to insult you i can make it myself feel free hera trots off to the coffee making area of the shop dion strides in he sees teresa and greets her with cheer teresa is a lot sweeter around dion teresa you beautiful angel Hello, Dion. How are you? I am well. What brings you to our humble cafe? <laughs> well, I just a little business with Hera and you. Sounds intriguing. Something clangs in the coffee making area. What was that? 
Hera is trying to make tea. Oh no. Hera shows up without any tea. Yeah. Where have you been? Where, where are you? I had to bring them a note from Joe. Lucifer? He prefers Joe. In quarantine. Who did you take there? I think Hera thinks she's a journalist or something. All the questions lately. Actually, she wants us to do her news show. The untouched is Sorry, really ahead. true. You mean it? The job is yours if you want it. I absolutely do. I'm only worried about having time to finish planning the C.S. Lewis party. Don't you worry, Miss Teresa. I am a god. That makes me like a Superman. <laughs> Superman, Diane, to my rescue. Indeed. So, what were you doing in quarantine? Dion is suddenly uncomfortable. He looks like Teresa. Mm. He looks at Teresa, hoping he hasn't ruined the start of a great working relationship. It's okay. This is all going better than I had hoped. Please, go on. Well, technically, I only went to the gates. I didn't actually stroll right into quarantine. I left them in the wonderful care of Joe. I had the pleasure of guiding or Gabriel and Raphael, plus Sai, AMZ's Andy. And when after the Angelicas? What I told them to do. Yes, they are very good angel boys. And you are very good at your job. Well, thank you. They kiss, kiss one another on the cheek. Are you two going to be like this the entire time we're working together? I can't help it. Diane is just the best. No, you are the best. No, you're the best. No, you. No, you. No, you. Mm, too much sugar, not enough tea, Dion. Now then, let's spill. We have much to do to get ready for the show. You're right. I'll have to explain the quarantine stuff later. I do have to show you the lay of the land, so to speak. We should get going. Yes, but first, I have to find something to wear. Hmm. Light, sp Light spade. Scene three, the Angelica's quarantine room. They have just finished their first meal and are now eating dessert cupcakes. Wait, if I wish for my mom's cupcakes, what did you wish for? Your mom's cupcakes? <laughs> Why? Yeah, I figured she's a good baker. She's probably really good. Interesting. I mean, Colombia has some nice desserts, but I'm a sucker for cupcakes. <laughs> Something I didn't know about you. Andy got, them, got me addicted to them. <laughs> You're really close to Andy, huh? I... I don't know what to think. I don't understand. It's just, you wanted to be a famous journalist, right? But how long will it take before you decide to do something else? 50 years, a hundred? I don't know. We all, we have all the time we want though, right? I mean, what's wrong about that? Mm, you might want to try something else, but I don't want to walk away from Andy after 50 or 100 years, you know, I, I just don't want, I just don't want to be with someone if we're all just going to be bored with each other, you know, there are thousands of nice, attractive, sweet people everywhere and we never get older, we get sleepy. You don't have to get, you just have to have a nice time. Yeah, it shouldn't just be a nice time. I don't know why, Andy's just different. He makes me feel like I did when I loved my family, you know, my, my friends, myself. I remembered me. Seems like it. Otherwise you wouldn't know your grandfather was here. Mm, I've always kind of remembered, <laughs> you know, like I said, little CNETs. But when you got the Ambrosa Cafe, it's like everything flooded in. Wow. Do you remember your name? Carmen. Carmen Llorona. Like the lady in the legend. Uh, 
always that story. <laughs> laugh out loud. <laughs> You're not supposed to actually say laugh out loud. I can say whatever I want. <laughs> laugh out loud. OMG. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I didn't want to be a famous journalist. I was a famous journalist on earth. Get out. Who were you? You ever heard of a show called Wake Up America? Wait, you're the one who is like the main lady. Of course. What was her name? Uh, Foster. Dang, girl. You look like this in your 20s? When you got it, don't hide it. <laughs> High five. <laughs> but you're just like, quit the show out of nowhere. Like, what happened to you? You got our show in Colombia? My family went on vacation all over the world. Plus, it was fun to watch you on the internet. The interview with Hugo Chavez was everywhere. Did you like my work? Por supuesto, but enough about our lives on earth. We're in quarantine. We should celebrate. <laughs> Angelica Dose does a little dance. Music suddenly starts to play. Angelica Dose makes her friend dance with her. Both of them have fun dancing. As the music ends, they fall on the sofa together laughing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't think I've had this much fun since I got here. To quarantine? No, don't that. To heaven. Oh, Dose. I'm sorry that we treat you so badly on the show. You don't treat me so badly. You're smart. You're funny. You have a lot to say. And I was so caught up in the monotony that I never took the time. It's okay. <laughs> We're all in a strange situation. The memories. <laughs> Mine are flooding in now. I had an aunt. You did? She raised me after my mother passed away. She's still alive. I must have broken her heart when I died. Hmm. Did you like your Thea? Yeah, she was great. Just critical. Mm, that's too bad. My abuelo was never critical to me. Did he raise you? My whole family raised me. That's nice. I was like the daughter my aunt never had. She wanted my life to be perfect and she pushed me so hard. I got great grades and went to an amazing journalism school. I don't think I would have ever been motivated if she hadn't pushed me, but I don't know. It's like I couldn't get her critical voice out of my head. Uh, that's crazy. It was life. Yeah. Wouldn't it be crazy if both you and your mother forgot your lives and had to run into each other back in the Abrahamic realm? Yeah, that wouldn't have happened. Why not? She was an atheist. <laughs> oh, the atheist party castle. <laughs> we passed it after the cafe. When you go back, you can go visit her. You're right. It was on the way over. I didn't even think about her until when I go back. Aren't you coming back too? Angelica hesitates. Um, Angelica Dose hesitates, not wanting to lie, but she must. Yes, of course. For some pistol. Wait, are we going to forget all over again when we go back? Are we going to forget the entire time we were here? <laughs> that would be crazy. We wouldn't be able to make news report then. <laughs> That's true. It's a good thing Teresa hasn't come here to stop us. Dos nods pensively. One lets out a yawn. Then Dos has a silent realization before she speaks. Yeah, almost as if Teresa... <laughs> nah, no way. <laughs> she can't be. She would have said something. One Ooh. yawns even louder. Clearly not paying attention. What are you doing? I think they call it yawning. But you're not supposed to get sleepy. It's the afterlife. It's strange. I'm not tired, just sleepy. And since we're in quarantine, that must mean that I want to sleep. Why do you want to sleep? I guess I, must, I miss dreaming. Not much worth dreaming about out there. 
But here we can choose the pleasant and the unpleasant. Angelica one curls up on the show sofa. Wait, you're going to sleep now? Don't worry. There's a TV in here. You can watch that for a little while. Might be fun. We won't be on it for a change. Yeah. Maybe I will. One falls asleep. Dos ponders for a moment and then takes decisive action. She walks out the door of the room. Lights fade. <laughs> Scene four, the newsroom of eternity today. Hera and Dion are in place as the new news anchors. It's a red letter day. Yahweh himself has called in to weigh on the ongoing quarantine situation. Yahweh is heard as a booming god might voice. We join the interview already in progress. We have the greatest paradise in the afterlife. Way better than the Amish, who are good people, fine people. But then you have this virus called sin. And it's making people very unhappy. I don't want an unhappy heaven. I prefer heaven when it's happy, but it's a shame that so many people are sitting around sad. So we made a quarantine, the biggest quarantine you've ever seen. And we're saving a lot of people. We're building heaven up again to something fantastic. And nobody's ever seen anything like it. And what do you think is causing such a surge in cases of sin in recent years? Well, look, we're rounding the corner on sin. We have three main angels, Michael, Uriel, and Joe. Very fine people. They're really doing a phenomenal job of keeping sinful people safe. And yeah, we're rounding the corner, and I think it's terrific. Yeah, right. Uh, you've held this position for so many years, and many people say they wouldn't be happy in heaven without you making sure they never feel pain or make mistakes or say anything bad about you. What's next for you? What can we expect to see for the next century? Oh, Dion, you can't even imagine. The century will be something no one's ever seen before. It'll be terrific, believe me. No other gods before me could get rid of sin. They tried. They were great people, but couldn't get rid of it. We're going to get rid of it, believe me. When somebody becomes God, the authority is total. It's total. And that's the thinking we need to get rid of sin once and for all. And it'll be terrific. Mm -hmm. Well, we know you're busy. So we'll let you go get to those amazing changes now. Oh, and Jesus says hi, by the way. Ah, isn't that great? Little G's, I tell you, that kid, I have done great work all, that kid and I have done great work all together. Don't you think? Really great work. Listen, I got to go. So I appreciate talking to you both. God is good, good all, all, the all the time. time. And all the time, I am good. The line crackles to silence. Well, that was divine. <laughs> Don't chuckle at the pun. Okay. We'll be right back, dears. Music cameras are off, and that's two minutes. They immediately break off into enthus uh, they immediately break into authentic rueful laughter. Oh M lowercase G. Uh, I know, right? That was the most ludicrous thing I've ever witnessed. Did you hear the way he was rambling? I almost feel sorry for him. Hmm, not me. Apparently he's been able to hold on to this job for, for way too long than, than anyone should. It, it is making him, I don't know, a, a little crazy? Crazy, <laughs> Yeah, crazy like a fox. <laughs> okay, <laughs> how's that? Well, just listen to him. He obviously has a great unmatched wisdom. Very stable genius at that. Hera is waiting for the punchline, but there is no punchline. Dion reflects on what he said, confused. Okay. Waiting for evidence anytime, D darling. I, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know what came out. Uh, that, that wasn't me. I, I was trying to say that no one should ever threaten you away and that I should be cautious next time. Oh, wait, no, what's happening? I, I wasn't trying to say that. Didi, honey, relax, it's, 
It's just jitters, that's all. Live TV can do that. It's, God is so great looking and smart. And he just gave us a perfect phone call. He made a tremendous difference. Kara is now frozen with indignance, indignance, anger, and a very uncharacteristic fear. She breaks out of it after a few seconds. The voice of Yahweh fills the room with cackling. How dare you, Yahweh? This is me on pay. Please just leave us alone. We'll play nice on air, we promise, but don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> they both feel relatively confident that they are no longer having their speech censored. Okay. I think you convinced him, Dion. I hope so. The music st starts up. Stage manager gives three, four, five, four, three. Welcome back. Let's look at the 12 month weather forecast. Sunny. Sunny, sunny, and then a little sunny. <laughs> well, that's good news. Dion oh. looks down at his ice scroll. And everyone, don't forget the C.S. Lewis party tonight. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, <clears throat> Dion has outdone himself, and we will be streaming live from the Lewis spaceship. Wait, where did Clive get a spaceship? Uh, he got a little bored with the mansion. <laughs> well, folks, are you happy living in your mansion? We have redecorating tips that will help you avoid floating around like Clive. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> we love you, dear. <laughs> we'll see you next time on Eternity Today. Music audio fade. Teresa! Quick lights. Scene five, the gates of quarantine. Joe is reviewing a scroll. He stamps and signs it and holds it up. All right, permission granted from the committee. Finally. This was actually pretty quick. Great, great, let's get going. Well, before you go into the halls, there are a few things that I wanna make sure you all know. Oh, come on, man. Trust me, I'm gonna do it all for your own sanity. But you're going with us, right? Well, of course. They aren't going to want to stay in quarantine, are they? I don't know. They, they probably, probably just, want to... just want a tour or something so we can report on it. Those should be safe, right? They're hard to say. Uh, she'll still look like herself, but I'm not so sure about her state of mind. Well, then we have to go now. I just, I have some guidelines. Joe picks up his main clipboard and notices that it seems to have something appearing on it that leads to dose. Ha <laughs> your timing is impeccable, Carmen. But what are you doing there? What? Where, where did she go? Uh, room 3L, section 4NG. Yep, at Santiago Llorona. <laughs> Even the last name is about a tragedy. Who the hell is that? Santiago is Dos's grandfather. She has a name, a family, a history. Are we going to go see uh, Carmen's grandfather? Looks like it. Let's go. What about your guidelines? I'll tell you all the particulars along the way. They all exit at the light speed. Scene six, Angelica One's room in quarantine. Behind her on a riser stands Yahweh. He wears a mask. Angelica One cannot see him. He is merely a disembodied voice to her. Wake up! Hmm? What? Who said that? Oh, please. Like, you don't recognize the most popular and manly voice in the afterlife. Angelica One didn't think she'd get caught so quickly. She makes a desperate play. Uh, why would I? I'm just here with my... Me, her mana. Enough. You think I don't speak French? I know it's you, Angelica One. What have I said about my reporters going into quarantine? You know, I'm glad you're here. 
You told us never to come here because sin will take over and we'll never be able to leave. You made this place sound like a nightmare. Why? Look, okay, some parts of the afterlife out there, and they're great people. Those guys can handle how things really work. But, you know, the Abrahamic folks, Muslims, Christians, sometimes Jews, they need ultimate justice. Believe me. They want a place where their enemies will suffer forever. So it's just you? It's just us in this Abrahamic realm the whole time? Joe should have never let you in. But it's too late now. You know too much. Shame. Sad shame. Why? What exactly is the problem? Look at you. Haven't even been here an hour and you're sound asleep. That is research. I'll oh, I, oh, I bet it was. It's amazing, isn't it? The thrill of danger when you know you'll be okay in the end. You can be pers you can be persecuted victim of your own life story, or maybe even the martyr sometimes. It's tremendous. Everybody says so. Believe me. I mean, it's not like telling people about the quarantine is going to cause everyone to start flooding in here, right? Let me guess. That dream you just had was about an ex-boyfriend who cheated on you, or a boss who fired you, or somebody punishing you for something you did. No. Ah, it's the last one. I was a bad student and I need to be disciplined. Those were very popular, believe me. Actually, it was my mom scolding me. What kind of dreams were you thinking about? Getting spanked or something? Hey, there's no evidence of that whatsoever. I know that because I paid her not to tell anyone. But this is about you. You won't do this story. But then why let me go all the way out here? What if maybe I just leak the story? Mm -hmm. See, this is why I'm the smart one, the smartest, maybe even like genius. I hear people telling me that all the time. Just cut to the point, God. I didn't say you can't do the story. I said that you won't. Think about it. By the time you've had your hundredth dream of thrills, chills, and excitement, why would you go anywhere? tell anyone you think you're the first person to try this you are just trying to scare me it's a secret not because i cover it up it's a secret because people become sinners they get proud when they relive their most painful moments and wake up knowing they're always safe they lust they get jealous they become gluttons who give themselves ton me aches on purpose. And there's some other sins in there, but you get the point. So why don't you just let everyone come here and make life easier? They need me. Without me, these, gener these sinners just sit around, wasting their eternity away. That's all these people want to do. They don't play music. They don't dance. They don't even make rainbows for crying out loud. They just sit there falling asleep and watching TV. I heard a guy telling me that once. Smart guy. That was me on the show, you dodo bird. I knew that. And I'm not a bird. I'm a very smart deity with the number one best shows in the afterlife. Best. Angelica One puts two and two together. That's what this is about, isn't it? You want to be the one that makes them feel happy. Only you. Not their dreams, not their journeys, not their past. Just your mindless TV shows and the stuff you give them to keep praising you. You want them to need you. So? I'm out of here. Ghost! Angelica runs out of the room. Ah, I'm getting too old for this shit. Lights. 
Scene seven, Ambrosia Cafe. Hera, Dion, and Ter Teresa hang out together. Hera is uncharacteristically quiet. Dion, that was some party. I do what I can. You surely did. Oh, although Clive didn't make it easier, switching venues in the middle of the planning process. You didn't think it makes sense that the interior an uh, inventor of Narnia wants to live in a spaceship? Oh, the, the ship is fine. It's the timing I didn't like. You did a terrific job, though. Mm, I know. I'm the best. Teresa studies Hera. Usually somebody makes a snarky comment right about now, Hera. Are you all right? No. You didn't have fun at the party? I've been thinking. I don't think I want to be a news anchor anymore. My show needs me after all. Oh, this is about the Yahweh thing. He does that sometimes. I'm famous for a lot of things, but none of them include being controlled by a man. Yeah, well, technically he's a god. Well, so am I. And I've never experienced anything like can we please get rid of Yahweh? Oh, Hera, don't worry about it. We live in Greek town. Yahweh can't touch us there. Look, all you have to do with Yahweh is kiss his ass. That's all he wants. <laughs> I will never kiss his ass. <laughs> Dion, flask at the ready, offers Hera a sip. Dion, you always come prepared. Hera looks a little ashamed. <sighs> Dionysus, I know I haven't been the kindest to you. Did you just call me Dionysus? Mm, trying to apologize here, darling. Yes, of course. <laughs> I should have been kinder to you, and I'm sorry about that. Well, that's kind of you to say. But what are we going to do about you? Hmm. No God should have to put up with this. I have to talk to him. Talk to Yahweh? I want to meet him face to face. He's a very busy deity. He's probably got a million things to do. This is a courtesy call from Yahweh requesting Hera at their earliest convenience. Thank you. Hmm. Guess he's cleared his schedule. Lights fade. <laughs> Scene eight, the quarantine room of Santiago Llorona. Angelica Dosa's grandfather. Dosa and Santiago are in the midst of conversation. Is Santiago here? Did Chuck get in? Yes. Oh, yay. OK, good. I'm going to read that again. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, scene eight, the quarantine room of Santiago Llorona. Angelica Dosa's grandfather. Dos and Santiago are in the midst of conversation. That's what I did to survive. I hurt people. A lot of people. Were they at least bad people? Carmen Sita. I was a bad person. No, no, you weren't to me. You were one of my favorite people in the whole world. So were you. You remember how you didn't have to worry about anything growing up? I had to be a bad person in order to do that. Um, I want, oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Keep going. Whatever. I'm sorry. <laughs> Whatever happened, you were good to me, to all of us. Your mother doesn't recognize me. Huh? What do you mean, doesn't? Here. There is no life for me. There is no afterlife for me. There is only this room. The only place people like me belong. But you aren't like the other people. You can get better. Abuelito, come on. Take anything with you. Come on. But I came to get you out of here. Why? Who are these people, are they bad, Carmen? 
they had their chance. They can leave any time. Don't you see why we stay? We run out of dreams to escape to. You don't have to. Please. Do you know what the worst thing about going to heaven is? You get such a beautiful surprise after so much pain. But for the rest of eternity, no other day can match how relieved and happy and amazed you were when you arrived. Because out there, there are no more surprises. It can still be beautiful. It will never be real. And when your grandchildren start to forget you, your great-grandchildren won't remember you. They don't dream about you anymore until you may as well not have even been born. Abuelo, I don't understand what you're saying. Unfortunately, you probably will soon. It's horrible that you had to die so young just so I could see you again. I feel guilty for being so happy you're here. Abuelo, I'm so happy to see you too. Santiago smiles at Angelica. You remember when I took us to Spain? We went to the museums, saw the flamenco dancers, all kinds of cultural things. But all you wanted to do was to see the castles in Andalusia. <laughs> I wanted to be a princess, <laughs> or at least feel like one. <laughs> you were my little princess. Mm. Mom was so annoyed because I wouldn't sit still, remember? <laughs> what did she expect? You were eight. Besides, a princess should enjoy her castle while she can. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Enjoy the castle while you can. Carmen, I have seen a thousand flamenco dancers and acres of beautiful Colombian fields since I came here. And all their faces started to look the same. All the fields look the same. But in the dreams of your children, you can see them again. You're speaking in riddles again. The next time you feel drowsy while you're here, don't fight it. Find the one who is looking for you. What do you mean? I watch you a lot, you know. You watch me on the news? Santiago, not. It makes me miss you less because you're right here. Ay, abuelo, thank you. And they should let you do the weather more often. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> From a distance, the rest of the news crew in Andy can be heard. Okay, uh, 4NG3L, uh, room 3B, 3C, 3D. It took, took them longer than I thought. What do I do? Nothing. Might be nice to have even more company. Angelica Dos looks worried. Suddenly, Andy bursts through the door. He rushes up to Dos and hugs her tightly. Joe enters, followed by Gabriel and Raphael. Are you okay? Are you okay? I'm fine, Andy. I almost had a heart attack, which you can't do because we're already dead and all that, but yeah. <laughs> I'm fine, don't worry. Apologies, Santiago, I was planning on knocking. It looks like someone was very excited to see my Carmencita. Dos holds Andy's hand and brings her him to her grandfather. Abuelo, this is Andy. <laughs> Andy, this is my grandfather. Pleasure to meet you, sir. Well, Carmencita, it's nice to see that you have a romance. We're just friends, right, Andy? Andy looks a little sheepish. Oh, for crying out loud. Gabriel grabs both Dose and Andy and makes them face each other. Look, 
You two like each other, so tell each other for the love of Jupiter. I I do care very much for you, Dose. Carmen. Do you know my real name? Yes. Dose, you're here. I found you. Guys, what are you doing here? I Dios mio. Light spade. Scene nine, Yahweh's humble abode again. The face of Yahweh is displayed just as before, very up close and pensive. Hera strides in. Welcome, Hera. Hello, Yahweh. It's terrific to see you. <laughs> yes. Hera is looking around. So what business do you have with the phenomenal God of the universe? You're just the God of the Abrahamic realm. There are a lot of us. Fine, what are you doing here? You called me. Because you wanted to see me face to face. But we're not. What? We're not face to face. You, you can see my face. Yeah, your huge face. Where are you really? This is me, I'm Yahweh the phenomenal god of the Abrahamic realm. There's a huge crash, like something dropped, stage left. Hera goes off stage in the direction of the noise. A door is heard being rattled. Oh, no, ow! The door swings open. Not pay any attention to the guy behind the door. Hera pulls an ordinary looking man onto the stage. There, now we're face to face. Pleasure to actually meet you, Yahweh. I'm not Yahweh. I'm his uh, uh, assistant. Huh, you just said you were the god behind the door. I, uh, no, 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 I'm not. Hera gives him a look. Fine, I'm Yahweh. Hmm. Great. Hera pokes Yahweh aggressively in the chest. <laughs> Forcing him back little by little. Don't you ever, ever, ever control my voice again. You can understand, I will fuck you up. Okay, 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 I'm sorry. I just had to show that I had some kind of power. Sorry, forgive me. Hmm. Yeah, well, whatever. Like I said, don't do it again. Okay. Okay. What were you doing in the closet anyway? I was on whoosh. I basically can get in any whoosh meeting in the Abrahamic realm. But why the closet? It has, it has good sound insulation. And I can control the lighting better. <laughs> You're strange. Doing this job for a hundred years, you gotta be a little strange. That's why I'm, that's why I'm starting to realize lately. You said a hundred years, though. I thought your mythology goes back for thousands. Yeah, well, Yahweh is more like a title, like your highness or something. So there have been other Yahwehs before you? Sure, hundreds. There's a lot of ways you can become a Yahweh. You could be nominated, you could be elected by the whole realm, can't just, can't trust fly in ballots. A lot of corruption in those ballots. Or you can get the job from the previous Yahweh. That's uh, why I called you up here. Oh? Nobody wanted the job 100 years ago. I mean, it's fun at first, giving people what they want in exchange for your loyalty and praise. But after a while, it's, it's what's that called? Uh, quid pro quo? I don't speak Greek. Anyway. It just doesn't have the prestige you'd think it would. I mean, sure, I have cool powers. It was great when people actually listened to me. It's not a hard job, but I mean, why would anyone choose to work in heaven? It's lonely and it's boring. Actually, a lot of that sounds fantastic. Not to me, it doesn't. Oh, that's too bad. I almost feel sorry for you. Well, don't. I'm just trying to be nice. I don't need pity, all right? 
I just need you. What I'm asking you is, what do you think about giving the Abrahamic God thing a go? Hera's floored, but she's very intrigued as well. Uh, will they let me, the committee? Sure, why not? We just have to confirm it with them. And I'd highly recommend you. Even though I threatened you with violence? Violence can be part of the job. So what do you say? Hera smiles at Yahweh, lights fade. Scene 10, Santiago's apartment in quarantine. Angelica Dos, Angelica One, Santiago, Joe, Gabriel, Raphael, and Andy are mid-conversation. That's impossible. Oh, come on. Game six, 2011 World Series. Bottom of the ninth, David Freese hits a game-tying triple on a one-two town. <clears throat> you really think he didn't get help from Yahweh? He couldn't just be a talented individual, eh? Cardinals down by two, about to lose the series. Texas fans gearing up to party. And bam, Freeze turns the whole thing around. You can't tell me that wasn't a god. Well, in all seriousness, Miho, I don't know if he had anything to do with it. Maybe none of them ever do much when we're alive. I learned long ago, the only thing more powerful than a god is a dream. Contemplation sits in the room. Nah, I'm not buying it. Although, I suppose it could have been one of the other gods. Who do you think would have been the most into baseball? It could have been Hercules, maybe. Santiago and... Okay. The guess? Maybe more like uh, Thor. Hammer's Thor's like a bat. That's... Hammer. <laughs> Yes, and it can be very insightful. <laughs> Abuelo, I think it's great that you get to watch old games. <laughs> as many times as I want. But I also enjoy watching all Raphael's reports. I'm honored. You honor me. No, you honor me. No, no, amigo, you honor me. No, no, senor, you honor me. All right, all right, you both are honored. I have so many questions for you. I'd be honored to answer them. Question one, what's it like to be in quarantine? Pretty much the same every day. I get to eat what I want or not eat at all. If I want, I can sleep. I slept too. Felt good, right? It did. I was surprised. It's nice to just not think for a little bit, right? I also watch TV. I've been working on writing a thing or two. I will, though. I didn't think you were a writer. I was me, huh? Not on Earth. You ever miss her? I miss some things about Earth. The little things. And I miss my daughter. But I don't miss how I was when I was there. What was Mama like as a child? She was very different from you, Carmen. You were a handful. You never wanted to sit still. You were always exploring. Lupe's exploring was very internal and reflective. She was quiet? Mama never yelled at me, even after that one time that I almost set fire to the house. <sighs> you tried to set the house on fire? I wasn't trying to. We just had a lot of candles. <laughs> Sound a lot like me as a child. <laughs> oh, really? Yes, sir. I was a tornado. I was also kind of a Snoopy kid. Were you like a real TMZ guy on her? I, um, I was a reporter for the high school newspaper. Became an editor, did some columns, gossip stuff, trending news. Not much really happened in my small town, but sometimes we did get better stories than the local papers. So I, I moved to New York and after college, I ended up working for Vanity Fair. That is so cool. It was a good time. <laughs> I bet you and Linda here probably ran into each other. 
I was a bit of a socialite, I suppose. Wait. Linda? As in... Raphael and Andy look closely at Angelica one and makes the connection. Linda Foster? I remember you now. You would spill the Hollywood gossip for your weekly segment, the, uh, um, the Foss goss. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, that was me. But still, not as noble as Vanity Fair. My apples and oranges, believe me. I've been working with Linda Foster this whole time. <laughs> this whole time! It's not that big of a deal. It is so big of a deal. You are an icon. I, I can't believe it. I've forgotten so much. I even forgot how I died. Huh. Probably was boring and unforgettable. I, I guess I could look it up for you. Nah. I was just a, a boring pitcher for the Dimebacks. We were at the bottom of the holy. I think I remember a movie about a pretty cool pitcher. I think it was called 16 or something. Hey, that was that was my jersey number. He was a great guy. He had this like crazy snake tattoo on his shoulder. A diamondback rattlesnake? I guess so. Wait. Did you have a lot of pain, like, in your arm? Yeah, that's crazy. I took a lot of painkillers for it. I couldn't let the team down, you know. But everything is kind of foggy. I just woke up and kind of ended up in heaven. Gabriel won, Dose and Andy stare at him. Ralph, you were 16. No, I was in my 30s, probably. No, you were the 16, the phoenix of baseball. You were Sol Edmonton. Okay, this is, this is weird. I was the most nobody pitcher in baseball. And how do you know? Well, 16 was the number one movie in America for a month. You don't, you don't remember how you died, do you? Nah, I was just glad that it was peaceful and not painful, whatever it was. You overdosed on prescription medication, Saul. You gave up your life for the team. There are gymnasiums named after you. People remember me? The whole movie was about you. How could we forget? A wave of admiration, even from Santiago, hits Rafael for the first time. In the awkward silence, Gabriel interrupts. Well... I'm glad everyone enjoys reminiscing about their lives on Earth, but I've always remembered mine. Oh, yeah? Sorry, Gabe, but uh, that's because you wanted to remember. Some of us wanted to leave that life behind. Yes, that's it. That's what has been bothering me about this quarantine place. It's only meaningful if you open your mind to painful truths or the happiness you had to leave behind. <laughs> but what about folks you were just thankful they got a life in the first place? The world goes around with many different kinds of people, Gabriel. Some are perhaps more grateful than others. Somehow we all live together on that ball of rock and water. This quarantine place can really make you... Make you... E, mijo, it can make you, and it can unmake you. Seriously, is this all we're going to be doing? We came all the way to quarantine to walk down memory lane. Let's just get out of here. Now, hold on, man. This is not easy for me. Yeah, and it's pathetic. I'm sorry, but it's true. Oh, I was happy, and then I lost my life. I was sad, and then I let Yahweh bribe me into forgetting everything. Have any of you thought that maybe there just isn't a story here? Isn't a story? This is the story. What, that some people can't appreciate paradise and accept what happened to them? <laughs> Face it, colleagues, the people who come here and stay here maybe belong here. Like Santiago over there said, 
Gabe, how could you say this? I just did. He's a murderer, Dose. Wake up. Come visit him sometimes if you want, but if you want to be a decent person, you smile and forget about the people who were too weak to make it to heaven. <laughs> weak? I'll show you weak. Dose stomps across the room and slaps Gabe, but of course, he doesn't feel anything. Oh, that was kind of cool. Why are you such a bully, Gabe? Actually, forget this Gabriel facade. You haven't seen me be a bully boy. I was Pliny the Younger. I killed people for being Christians. I saved my mother from the cloud of death that erupted from Mount Vesuvius, reporting on the destruction that killed my Uncle Pliny the, the Elder. And yet, do you see me sulking in the corner, afraid of my memories? No. I'm going out those doors and getting behind that desk in the studio. I accept what I did and what I saw. And you don't feel anything about what you went through? In the words of my uncle, the best plan is to profit by the folly of others. And I'm starting to believe that. If Grandpa here wants to sulk because no one cares about him, that's too bad. Not me, though. You're a total monster. Hey, I came to help the ladies out of here, or at least come back with a story. Who am I to tell them what to do? You could at least explain to them why they will be missed. Not my pay grade. I guess that's what you and your uncle were feeling back then, profiting off the folly of the dozens of people you both rescued. I guess you just needed a sequel to one of those books. Uh, must have been so hard for his uncle, pretending to, to care so he'd have something heroic to write. You dare bring my uncle's name to shame? So how many people screamed around you in the darkness? What? How many people, women and children, did you hear suffocating and dying? Oh, please. What? Did it sound like Pliny? Gabriel is overwhelmed by the rush of memories. Nothing. I don't, I don't remember. They were weak. I tried to save them. I don't... What does it sound like? It's so terrible. Raphael hugs a fully decompensating Gabriel who suddenly pulls away. I... No, no, I won't be trapped here. Gabriel races out of Santiago's apartment. Angelica 1 stands up to go after him. Joe stops her. No, this... This is something he has to deal with. They all look at him with concern. Don't worry, my friends. It's not like he can die again. Lights. Scene 11, the Ambrosia Cafe. Dion, Hera, and Teresa gather around drinking Greek wine. You have been busy. So have you, darling. I haven't been running around becoming a Yahweh. You start right away. Well, there's a period of transition. But yes, after that, I have the job. I can't wait to plan the big party. It would be wonderful with you at the helm, Dionysus. They do air kisses. Hera rolls her eyes. So, Teresa, darling, I understand that there is something you need from me. Just Teresa your, pulls. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. That's your signature. I already got the paperwork from the committee. Hera begins looking over the papers and signing them. What is it for? Passage to the quarantine. Worried about your news team. Just a little bit. I want to make sure that they are all right. Well, that's really kind of you. I'm worried they are going to think I'm overbearing. You? Overbearing? How could they think that? I'm not the nicest towards the team. Well, you have to run the ship. Of course you can't be nice all the time. <laughs> really nice of you to say, Dionysus. Tara finishes off the last paper with Claire. 
She hands the paper to Dion. Dion, would you do the honors of taking this to the committee? Certainly, no problem. Dion starts to walk out. Dion, thank you for everything. Efrejesto. Paracalo. Dion sweeps away. And as your God, <laughs> I never stop loving that phrase in your face, Zeus. <laughs> anyway, as your God, I can get you straight through. Teresa nods. Are you sure you want to surprise them like that? Uh, they'll be okay. Hopefully. Lights fade. Scene 12, Santiago's apartment. Joe, Angelica one, Angelica does. Santiago, Rafael, and Andy sit together quietly. Joe is reading through Gabriel's file. It's just that he's always acting like I'm stupid. I'm not stupid. Yeah, he's a little rough, but he's still Gabe. It's just weird that he would become a Christian at the end of his life. Joe finds something in the file and looks up. Uh, he didn't, uh, according to his file, because he was so horrible on Earth, the committee gave him the choice between being in quarantine or getting stuck in the Christian heavens. He refused to sit around in the company of weak people. So there you have it. Wow. Well, at least he got stuck in Protestant heaven. Catholic heaven was awful. Look, heaven. <laughs> of course. I was very Roman Catholic growing up. And you think Gabriel's Papist? <laughs> Wait till you meet the Pope. <laughs> Wait. All of you are from Protestant heaven? You're lucky I'm a merciful man. <laughs> How did you end up in Protestant heaven, Miha? Uh, another committee decision. Which was completely unfair. What did you do? I suppose I should have said something before now, but I did recognize you when you came in, uh, Carmen. I just wasn't sure. I read your file after I put you two in the apartment. Seriously? All that work trying to fool you? Okay, anyway, in Catholic heaven, I made friends with Frances Sweeney. Uh, she was a reporter in the 1920s or 30s who fought against hate crimes in America. She was a lot like you, Linda, always thinking about quarantine as if she wanted to free everyone or something. I don't know. So Aphrodite sponsored Francis and me here. But I just came here with her because I wanted to help find you, Abuelo. Teresa walks in dragging Gabriel. I think you guys lost something. Hey, whoa, Teresa, it's not what it looks like. Get her, Joe. No, Linda, I think I know what she's trying to say. I'll fill in the blanks. Aphrodite signed the papers, we got caught, and the Catholic leaders gave us a choice. Stay in quarantine or have your memories wiped and get banished to Protestant heaven. Joe's decided to lose her memory and go back and... I stayed. You stayed? Wait, Teresa, are you? Yep. Francis Sweeney, guilty as charged. Whoa. You've Whoa. been piecing your identity together this whole time. Like me. Didn't you know who I am? That's typically hard when it's confidential. That is what confidential means. And to think you're all such hard-hitting journalists. Tisk, 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 shame. Harsh. Oh, stop. Seriously, though, why didn't you tell us? Um, it was better not to. I knew one day there'd be a young, talented Christian reporter with the same spunk I had. It was a matter of time before Carmen started to remember little things here and there, we never truly forget everything. Well, I wouldn't agree with that. You are always a stickler, Lucifer. I prefer Joe. And no, 
I'm not. You met me one time. Ah, Not even gonna thank me for convincing the committee to fast track the Angelican's paperwork? Sounds like a stickler to me. <sighs> okay. Thanks. So, why are you here? To make sure you all come back and share the story. But then I ran into you in the hall. I apologize for acting. You don't have to. You think I was brave or strong to be in heaven, knowing what I left behind, who I left behind? Sorry to disappoint, but I just ran out of dreams in here. I don't know how many times it takes until you get sick of hacking into your old memories. I only had 36 years worth of them. Then I left, I got a new home, got a new gig. Oh, and Mr. Lorana, I presume? Buenos dias. Thank you for your hospitality. I should thank you for seeing my Carmen again. But where do I go now? What do you mean? You can come back with us, right? It's like friend said, I was even younger when I died. I didn't think I belonged here in quarantine, playing my life like a, a rerun, but I'm sorry. I don't want to go back to heaven. It isn't real. But there is a way. Huh? Carmen, if you don't want to go back to heaven and you don't want to dream of your own life, there is only one other place for you to go. Back to Earth. What? What do you mean? So wait, ghosts are real? Not as uh, a ghost, uh, in, in people's dreams. Whenever people dream of you, that's you, in their dreams. What? Really? I get to see my mama. Well, my can, real mama? It can be a little jarring. You aren't in control of where you are or what you experience. But yeah, uh, if she dreams of you, you will know. Well then, I'm going with you. <laughs> I know. Huh? Uh, what? How, how did you? How did you know? Because. Dos holds his face in her hands, their eyes pulling each other close, like a massive, like massive celestial bodies amid aligned stars. She kisses his face with conviction, with life, with love. I love you, Carmen. Was the kiss that good? <laughs> I love you too, Andy. <laughs> Angelica does turns to her grandfather, face in his hands. That's what you were trying to tell me earlier, right? About the dreams? I came to figure it out over the years. Joe helped me. Then you have to come with us. We can visit Mama. Santiago shakes his head. I cannot. But why not? No one on earth loves me. They only drag me back to them through their nightmares. And you have no choice. You must hurt them because it's their dream. Like me. By the time I tried to visit someone, no one back on earth remembered me. No kids telling my story or friends still alive. Days and days of being forgotten. No one wants to dream of us anymore. The weight of that statement crushes everyone on the stage. This is not only this is the only hell that can be eternal. But you, Carmen Sita, you should go. Find the ones who still want you in their dreams. Let them carry your story as long as it can. Santiago embraces Dos. You have no idea what your presence has done, what it can still do. Hi, abuelo. I wish I still had the chance to dream of you. Te quiero. Te quiero también. Dos turns to one Gabriel and Raphael. <clears throat> well, it's not really a goodbye, but it feels like we only just started knowing each other. We'll visit. Is that okay, Jill? I'm sure the former Fran Sweeney can help pull some strings.
You got it, folks. Honestly, I feel like Teresa suits me better now. I've been here for about as long as I was Fran on Earth. Raph, I'm sorry for how I've been treating you. It's okay. I'm sorry if I was cruel. I deserved it. I'm not really proud of what I did. Though I am proud of how I did it. Gabe, you are something else. Well, I think you guys are settled here. Uh, you've got Teresa to guide you out. I'll be on my... I want to stay here uh, with Santiago. What? Gabe, I guess you're my friend or whatever, but sometimes you're just too much. Maybe you have too much history in your wings, or maybe all heaven is is a little too big for me. Well, uh, your new, new destinations don't have to be permanent. Uh, what do you say, Santiago? I would love the company. Raphael, high five Santiago. Yes. Wow. Can't imagine life without you, Raph. Everything is changing so much. But wasn't that what life was? A whole lot of changes? I suppose so. And besides, you got me. <laughs> I suppose I do. I suppose I do. At any rate, you can all stay here as long as you want, but I've got appointments to keep. Joe starts to leave. Hey, Joe. Uh, yes, Linda. Thanks for everything. My pleasure. Joe exits as the lights fade. Scene 13, the Ambrosia Cafe. Dion, Teresa, Angelica One, and Gabriel sit together drinking glasses of Greek wine. This wine is amazing. Why, thank you, Linda. I figured you three needed the best after all you went through. That's really kind of you. Oh, uh, don't you don't you think it's great wine, Gab? Plenty. Gabriel uh, sighs glumly. What's wrong? It's going to be you and me at the news desk. Just you and me. What? You think Teresa is going to get rid of this fabulousness? Yeah. <laughs> Don't think so, Buster. Of course, I won't get rid of you from my newscast. You're my favorite. No, you're my favorite. You're my favorite. Okay, we get it. You adore one another. Oh, we do. Why are you so grumpy, Linny? Missy, missing Ralph or Soul already? No. Yes. Maybe. Everything is changing. But it might be changing for the better now that Hera's in charge. You guys could do more investigative reporting. We could interview celebrities, visit other heavens, find out how people got to where they are, maybe even have Hera come on from time to time. That does sound fabulous. Yes, I guess it wouldn't be so bad. Sounds kind of fun. And like I said, you have me. Gabriel looks around the room and finally smiles. We all have each other. We're going to be okay, Plenty the Younger. Yeah, Plenty. That's my name. <laughs> Don't wear it out. Gabriel gives her a look. You got to listen up. I'll try. Just be yourself, Plenty, and you, Linda. We should all be ourselves. Okay, Teresa. Hey, Teresa is who I choose to be. It's beautiful, isn't it? We all get to be ourselves. I could toast to that. To eternity today. The best damn newscast in all of heaven. They clink glasses, lights fade. Scene 14, Earth. Present day, a community center. A grief counseling group just ended as evidenced by a semicircle of chairs. Latin American middle-aged woman, Lupe Arona, sits in the center chair, putting a few books in her bag readying herself to leave. 
young lady in her thirties, Anna Sabina, enters the room with a little urgency. Oh, you're still here. I'm glad. You're just about to leave. Good timing. Uh, what is it you need? Have you seen my purse? It's pink with a rose on it. Uh, like the one on your arm? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I had it all along. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I canceled my Uber just to come back and look for it. <laughs> it's pretty dumb, huh? <laughs> After running this group for a few years, you learn to stay a little longer just in case. <laughs> the grieving process yeah, drains the mind. I've noticed. You shared quite a bit tonight. Yeah. I didn't mention it, but tomorrow would have been Andy's birthday. Tomorrow is still his birthday, Anna. Always remember that. I will. Anna turns to leave. She turns again. Miss Yorona? Yes, Mika. Thank you for these past few weeks. They've meant so much to all of us. <laughs> if you don't mind me saying so, I think Carmen would have been proud. Andy was lucky to have a sister like you. Do you think it's true what you said about the Wayu tribe? Can they see their ancestors again in their dreams? Well, that was just an example of grieving they talked about in Colombia, but maybe they have a point. I mean, what makes a person special isn't the flesh and bone we see in front of us. It's the impression we leave on, on those who are still alive, the, the memories we make with others, how we make them feel, the stories they tell about us, that's what we really are. So maybe when we dream of our loved ones, that's their way of reminding us that they haven't left us. Wow, I hope it's true. A few days ago, I had the weirdest dream. I was doing something totally unimportant. And then Andy is walking down the street with this dark haired lady and they looked so happy. He was pointing to her long green necklace saying something about a honeymoon. It was the first time I've seen his face without feeling sad. It's so beautiful. They start, stop short, stands, bag in hand. Huh. That's interesting. Um, was it a, a, a jade necklace or? Uh... No, no, more like a deep emerald color. Really nice. You sure it, it was an emerald necklace? Positive. Why? You know, it's a great step forward to remember things about those we love. I happen to have a dream of my Carmencita. <laughs> she came home and brought a man with her I, I never saw before. With such nice boots he was wearing, like very strong ones too, like, um, like those Timberland ones. Light brown boots? Yeah, very bright boots, almost an orange color. Cool. Cool. <laughs> uh, um, uh, actually, there might not be an Uber for a while, so. Oh, oh do you need a ride to the train station? I'd, I'd be happy to take you. Thanks. Yeah, of course, Mika. Lights fade slowly. Scene 15, the news desk of eternity today. Angelica 1, Gabriel, and Dion are in place for the newscast. Hera sits in the guest chair. Teresa bustles about in preparation. All right, everyone, let's get this show on the road. Yeah. 
This is Eternity Today, Heaven's number one news source, with Plenty the Younger and Linda Foster, and the party report from the god of wine and food, Dionysus. I'm Plenty the Younger. And I'm Linda Foster. Today, we have an exciting newscast for you all. And don't forget the party report with the always priceless Dionysus. I've got so many tips for your special occasions. We have a lot of great news for you tonight, but first, we have a message from our beloved goddess, Hera. Followers of Baha, children of Moses, people of Isaac and Ishmael. Ooh, that's a good line. That one stays. I am pleased to serve you as your Yahweh, as long as you will have me. There will be changes throughout the Abrahamic realm, but I can assure you that the committee will always be here for you. Some of you have been keeping uncomfortable thoughts, memories, feelings. Some of you might even believe that you don't deserve heaven, but there is no reason to be guilty about what we feel. Do not punish yourself forever over a finite life. Do not be ashamed if you live your living haven't forgotten you. We have not forgotten them. We are the angels. They have been seeking their whole lives. Help each other remember the past and guide your loved ones towards each other so that earth and heaven will never know loneliness. We can inspire the living. No matter the distance, we can rejoice in their memories and we can keep them company when no one else does. How can we do all this? Stay tuned. More on that after the break. And now, the weather. Lights fade, end of play. 